Good morning, City Point. Good morning, City Point. It's the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice today. Can I invite everybody to stand on their feet as we praise together? Yeah. As we sing together, as we worship together this morning, it is a special Sunday, and we're going to treat it accordingly and give God the highest praise that we can. All right?
keep doing it. Keep that praise going on. Hallelujah. Welcome to church on Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Um, the scripture reading today is going to be coming from 1 John. And I'm going to be reading, I do believe this is a King James Version. Um, 1 John, that is 2. And I'm going to be reading verses 2. Let's do 1 through 5. How about that? And then I'll lead us in prayer. Amen? Open us up in prayer. All right, my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye not sin. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know, say it again, Hereby we do know that we know him. Come on. Hereby we do know we know him. If we keep his commandments. Amen. Amen. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is what? A liar. Amen. And the truth is not in him. Come on. Here's the rock. But whosoever keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected it's come to perfection y'all it has come to perfection hereby we know come on hereby know we that we are in him yes we are amen and the church said amen amen let's pray church father it is in humble submission that we enter into your place into the house of prayer into the place and the sanctuary of worship, into the moment of praise, into the sanctuary of your holiness, that we come boldly to the throne of grace that you said that we can do. Come boldly to the throne of grace in order to obtain mercy in times of trouble. Father, we are living in some tormental times, but we know we serve a God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to the power at work in us. So Father, release now that power. Open up the floodgates of heaven. Pour out upon us this day in this sanctuary your spirit, and we shall give you the praise that you deserve on this day. We shall give you the glory that you demand, O oh God. For we are the humble servants of the Most High God. And we come to praise you. We come to worship you. And we come to lift your name on high. Now, Father, as this service begins to unfold, I ask, Father, that you touch our pastor. Touch him as you have never touched him before. Open up his mouth and speak, Lord. Thy servants are listening. And the church said, Amen. If you can stay on your feet, we're going to give God a little more praise because he's deserving of it all. Amen. He's deserving of it all. Amen. Join us like this here. Let's make it a praise party, y'all. You are God and you're in control. Yeah. 
step off the mics, but if you still love the Lord, and he's good to you, maybe you can lift it up just like they're lifting it up. Is that all right? Man, can we bring that one more time for the congregation of believers? Yeah. For the group that don't got the microphone, but they still love God. For the people who may not have all the good church lingo, but you know you love God. You can say it. Great Jehovah. You're good. Everybody, everybody lift it up right now. Say, you're good. Man, break one time. Yeah, great Jehovah.
When I went to look up and research about Easter Sunday in Bronzeville, I found pictures that were in 1941. There was a church who had their Easter service, and at the end, the choir left outside the doors. They went through the neighborhood. They talked about the goodness of God. They talked about how amazing and excited it was that he was back, that he is alive. It is amazing for us to do work in these four doors, in these four walls, but this reminded me of Pastor D's passion to really be a community church. I have our kids in this spirit with an Easter processional today to tell you that he is alive and the youngest members of City Point, believe me, they know it. So again, raise up your hands, stand to your feet, welcome CP Kids, ready to spread the good news. Just as he said. This Easter Sunday, this Easter Sunday, we are sharing the Jelly Bean poem. Jelly Bean poem. Red is for the blood he gave. Green is for the grass he made. Yellow, yellow is the, <coughs> yellow is for the sunflower so bright. Black is for the dark of night. White is for the grace he gave. Orange is for the sun he made. Purple is for the hours of sorrow. Pink is for our new tomorrow. A bag of full of jelly beans, colorful and sweet. It's a prayer, a promise, and a child's treat. Yeah. 
One more time, let's lift it up as the children head out. He's alive. And I think we got a little more love to pour on them for their speeches this morning, right? I think we got a little more encouragement for the kids this morning, right? One more time. They're still in the sanctuary. Can we make some noise for the babies? Just. Yeah. City Point, it is a special Sunday. You all know that because you're here. Part of this special Sunday, we are blessed with a special guest yet again. I'm not sure if it was last year or the year before, but this sister blessed us with a powerful, powerful gift of her spoken word. I don't even know if it's appropriate to call it that. I don't want to oversimplify it, but she has a gift that has levels to it. And so I beg of you, everybody in here, listening to the sound of my voice, when you listen to the sound of her voice, listen for God, because he certainly works through her. Her name, is Jasmine Sims. Can we make some noise for today's special guest? Good morning, family. So as he said, I do spoken word poetry. And so today, I'm going to freestyle if that's okay. And so that is going to require audience participation. I, you know, my Apple Watch updated and I'm trying to set an alert because I be getting excited and I want to stay in my time. So Corey, you just may have to shake your keys if I'm going too long because I can't work this thing. I'm a, I'm a auntie now. <laughs> so it is a resurrection Sunday. Every year I say happy he got up day. It get on my mama nerves, but I love it. So happy he got up day. So the way we're gonna set this poem up is I'm going to ask you guys for a few prompts. Words, colors, objects. Now throughout the piece, if I go like this, that means you're going to throw out a word to me. Now I know we're in church and we're talking about the resurrection, but your job is not to be deep and spiritual. That's my job, okay? So when I ask for a word, fight the urge to say joy and resurrection. I need things I can see, touch, smell, and taste. Got it? Okay, because if you shout out peace, I'm gonna have to skip you and go to your neighbor. I need, I need something like truck, apple, tree, rain. We vibing? Cool. So when you think about the resurrection, what object besides the cross comes to mind? A stone? A tree? Somebody wants me to say tree. What texture? Texture. Rough, okay. Anybody else? Sand. sand. Rough sand tree. A st okay. <laughs> okay. So now y'all gotta wait for y'all cue. Rough sand stone tree. <clears throat> Every year we gather. Some of us gather in buildings cut from stone or brick, but every year we gather. Inside of a God cut from flesh, we gather here in his presence. And we pay homage to the life that he lived, our Savior. Our Savior had no easy life, no soft life as we like to say, his life rough. Him a lonely God, disciples had a hard time deciphering his message. His life was hard. Feet, I imagine our Savior's feet had blisters as he walked from country to country to tell them that he is the good news. They, they did not receive him. See, in the beginning was the word, 
The word was with God, the word was God, and that word became flesh, dwelt among man, but we perceived him not. Could not decipher deity. Could not decipher it. We drink from wells cut from flesh. I've been drinking from this relationship. It has left me dry. I've been drinking from this platform. It has left me dry. He says, come, I am the water. You drink from this and you will never thirst again. Only hungry for his love now. Cloud. Y'all still being deep. <laughs> Flowers. I, for I forgot the last thing I said. I drink from him and I am never thirsty. See, they took the life from my savior. Did you know a God could give up his life like this? Know that they would take his body, bury it beneath the ground. They didn't know that the seeds were made from his very breath. So he began to bloom again on the third day he lives now. I smell this blossom smell like grace now. Spray his blood across my body like perfume. I am covered now. Death, death gets a whiff of me and he begins to choke and cough because he thought he had a right to my flesh. But death cannot claim me no more. Death is not the end. Only doorway to life everlasting. Death has no sting. Just burns a little bit when I grieve the loss of my kin. But I know soon one day I will see them again. I know that I will see him again. And see, the Lord is so good that though the life he promised me is life everlasting still, he decides to pull up on my block like a food truck. <laughs> Tells me. Tells me to read from this menu and I request things like forgiveness. He says, take it. I have a multitude that will cover all of your sins. Says, read from this menu. Give me favor. He says, take it. I know exactly who I've called. I was aware of your weakness before your name was ever on my tongue. I was aware of your shortcomings before I ever knit you in the womb of your mother. I know who I called. So he drives up on my block like a food truck. And I know the music, when he gets close to me, it sounds like redemption. Hair? Dirt. Dirt. It sounds like redemption. He reminds me to step outside. Look around the earth that he made, says, daughter. Dig your hands into the dirt. Know that this is from which you were made. The only difference between you and a houseplant is I chose to breathe into the dust of you. Now you made in my image. He says, your hair, I keep track of every single strand. So tell me, why do you run yourself ragged in these relationships who can't tell you the amount of hairs on your head like I can? Tell me. Tell me, why do you keep going to these people and these places looking for value when I, I am the only God who made you in my image. I am the only God who crafted this life. I am the only God who will ever satisfy, daughter. You'll never grieve me. I cannot die again. You will never miss me. There is no grave that has my name carved into its stone. That grave I had was borrowed, belonged to some other man that death had a right to, but not I, because this, this is a resurrection Sunday means that you, you will get up out of that bed of depression. It will not be the end. This is the day of resurrection. You will get out of your bed of affliction. That will not be your end. You, son, will rise out of your bed of addiction because I am the resurrection and I am the life. You will rise out of your bed of the grief because I am the resurrection and the life. All darkness runs out of shadows, so come into the light. I am the God of the light. This resur resurrection Sunday it's not simply a blip on the calendar to remind us why we praise him. No, this, this is a reminder of why we praise him. It is a reminder of why your sorrow loses its grip on you the more you cry out, Jehovah, come rescue me. It is a reminder of why your grief has a time limit. Every time you say, Jehovah, Hosanna, deliver us, church, I feel like I'm the only one who knows that he got up bread. I need, that's easy. Airplane, crown, front door, airplane, crown, front door, book bag. Okay, y'all getting it. This is a reminder that your sin, though it keep you from me, is it a front door for my grace to come and make itself at home? Why do you run from me? 
It is easier to run from a God who is stuck in the grave, but I will pursue you. Where can you go where my presence cannot follow? If you make your bed in hell, behold, I am right there with you. Sometimes, sometimes your worship sounds like you crying out to a dead God. Like it bounces off caskets and tombstones, but I am the God of the living. You forgot what you asked me for five years ago, and now it is here, and you, not are, and you are not ready. Did you forget that I am the God who listens? That I am the God who has keep you safe and secure when you were on your way to sin, because I knew your worship still had need of me. I am your God. But still, you put your faith in pockets like a book bag instead of your heart. Why you don't keep your faith inside of your limbs is the only thing to carry you through you. You only study my word when you find sorrow and darkness. Why don't you come to me when you are full of joy and happiness? Today is a day of celebration, but where were you, my church, when I needed you? When that person on that corner needed a word and you clutched your jacket tighter to you, you are my arms, church, and I've been trying to hold the city of Chicago, but my body will not listen to me. You are my body, church. Instead, you think you need an airplane to go deliver this good news to those who need it most. But all you need is my faith inside of your heart. This generation is not lost. We're simply looking for a God that we can believe in. Trying to pray to a God who will hear my voice and he speaks back. So God, today we cry happy resurrection, but we cry resurrect the faith inside of our hearts. Light a match to the prayers our grandmother prayed for us years ago. We will wear your resurrection like a crown and glory. I am nothing but a tool. I am nothing but a cup and I ask for you to fill me up and pour out so this city church can know that you are good that you are the resurrected king, that our praise does not ricochet off clouds and ceilings. Instead, it cuts through heavens and it gets to you. So God, tonight, we're going to praise you like you are real. We will speak to you like you have ears, not carved from stone, but cut from flesh. You hear us, oh God. So today, I am sitting here to remind you that the grave is empty, but so is your shame. That the grave is empty. And so is the power of death, hell, and the grave. It has no power, church. Your enemy is nailed to a cross. All he can do is talk. Why do you fear his voice? When your God has given you angels charge concerning you, your enemy is nailed to the same cross that your Savior got up from. So I say, arise, O sleeper. I say, awake out of your bed of doubt. You serve a living God. I speak life into your dreams. You serve a resurrecting God. I speak hope into your marriage. You serve a resurrecting God. He raises lives and marriages. He redeems children and fatherhood. He sanctifies motherhood. Single folk, I'm getting off topic. Single folk, your first purpose and calling is in the God who saved you married folk. Your first purpose and call is in the God who saved you church. Your first purpose is in the God who saved you. Not platform and not numbers. He is the resurrecting God. I'm going to end it poetic because I'm supposed to be a poet. So today, God of you has resurrected our bodies out of beds and called your body out of a tomb. We call our arms up from our sides and we resurrect them to the heavens to the only God who is able to deliver us from our own sin. You are holy. For you are the God who has delivered us. Not from merely the power of sin, but the penalty of it too. We have been redeemed. So God, we praise you because you're worthy. We resurrect our worship because you're holy. Happy Resurrection Sunday.
by his stripes we are healed by his nail pierced hands we're free by his blood we're washed clean now we have the victory oh the power of sin Oh, 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 he has won. He has won our freedom. She, Jesus has won it all. Won it all.
hands to him for a moment can we surrender our cell phones for salvation can we surrender our conversation for salvation can we surrender just for a moment just for a moment whatever conversation you were having can we give God our undivided attention and give him good praise everybody yeah? you don't have to shout it out but I encourage you to let it out one way or another lift God by speaking well of him right now speak well of him right now hallelujah yeah 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 defeated that's not how say yeah I've got a hope in the future because he's risen y'all he's praying in heaven right now for me it didn't end in the grave y'all that's good news tell your neighbor that's not how the story is because in three days he rose again that's not how the story is because in three days he rose again City point on it, just, 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 just a little bit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Ensemble, will you join me? Say thank you, thank you, you, Lord. Oh, we can go there too. It's all right. I just wanna, I just want to, you. It'll feel a little bit more like City Point if y'all stood up and rocked it out with us. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, 
Sunday City Point put your hands together give our God some praise a few weeks ago we were just saying a prayer we preached a uh, I preached a sermon um, entitled uh, there is still room and we ended that service praying that God will fill the room and today, God has both heard and answered prayers. There are over 300 people in this building, over 200 people in this sanctuary. I want to say to you guys, thank you, because on that day, the Spirit just led me to tell you guys, we did not even own enough chairs to accommodate all the people that God would send on Easter. And so I said, we needed about 50 more. And I told you guys how much that would cost, and you gave. I mean, gave and gave and gave, and some people were like, here's $200, buy five chairs. Here's $80, buy two chairs. And so we bought 50 more, and those 50 more God has already consumed by sending the people. And so I want to celebrate you guys because these back rows did not exist, and they only existed because of your faith, but your faith that went into deeds, right? Because faith without works is dead. And so you did something with your faith, believing God, believing in the mission of what we are doing here at City Point, and you made that investment. Uh, and today, people are here. They didn't have to bring their Miller Lite lawn chairs with them on Easter uh, morning to be able to have a place to sit in church. Now, for the summer, I don't know what we're going to do. We might have to bring those, those sling chairs. But again, I want to just thank you guys so much. Um, it is not first Sunday, but it is Easter Sunday. And so we got to sing a little bit about the blood. And we got to celebrate communion together. Amen? Corey, come on. Corey working overtime today. The blood that Jesus shed for me I'm grateful Let us stand together. If you have not, go ahead and prepare your, your cup. Let me pray for us. Lord in heaven, we thank you for the amazing sacrifice that you made for us on Calvary's cross. We do this because your word says that as often as we do it, we do commemorate your death until you come again. Pray that you will prepare our hearts and our minds to receive it. The Bible says that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he was with his disciples in the upper room. After giving thanks, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to them. And he said, take it and eat all of it, for this represents my body, which shall be broken for you. Let us eat together. The word says that in like manner, afterward he took 
the cup. And he said, take it and drink all of it, for this represents my blood, which shall be shed for you. Let us drink together. He said, as often as you do this, you do show remembrance of my death until I come again. Lord, we thank you that you are coming again. Thank you that you are coming again. But in the meantime, we know that we have work to do because of the cross of Calvary. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will animate us, fuel us for the work of loving one another, for the love of demonstrating that we are connected to Christ through the way our ethics show up every day. I pray these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give one, one more round of that. everywhere y'all it reaches everywhere everybody qualifies the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never loop it will never thank you that the tomb is empty thank you because it says that your word is reliable thank you so we need to be able to depend on your word Thank you that the tomb is empty. Thank you that there is no place on earth that says here lies Jesus. Thank you that we do not have a Christian holy place where we can go to to lay flowers at the grave of our Savior. Thank you. And one day, just as you got up, all of those that we have lost will one day get up from those graves once again. It says to us that death does not have the last word. It says that the state does not have the last word. 
it says that even the religious institutions do not have the last word. Thank you that we get to serve a risen Savior. Mm. God, stir something up in us that we work because of the fact that our Savior lives. I pray that you will preach through me to these, your people, in a way that is meaningful. For some people, this is going to be one of the few times that they sit under a preached word or in the fellowship of people that believe. I pray that you will speak to them today. Not just through words that I could conjure up, but your Holy Spirit has a way of doing things. Do that thing that you do, Lord. Somebody might come running today saying, what must I do to be saved? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Won't you praise God for this band? Celebrate the leadership of Corey Barksdale. Wasn't this ensemble amazing? Y'all didn't know I had a, a recruitment cam going on looking at the audience who was participating with the ensemble. Y'all going to be on the recruitment list for the next ensemble. We are definitely, um, we are definitely coming to get you. You're going to be up. You don't know it yet, but you're going to be up here on the next one. Um, but our ensemble is a great, great opportunity for those that are like, I can't commit to singing every Sunday. Um, I cannot bear the weight of carrying a note all the time, but if you give me three good songs and five good weeks to prepare, I can be a part of that ensemble. And they did that and more than that. And so it is also a great community to be able to be a part of. There is a community and connection being built through being a part of that. I was here for their rehearsal yesterday. It really was a time. Uh, and so if you're interested in being involved in the next ensemble, which will happen whenever is the next time we have a fifth Sunday of the month, you can see Corey, who was here leading worship, uh, to talk more about that. Uh, I want to respect the fact that some of y'all got brunch plans. This ain't your last stop for the day. This is your first stop. And so I want to respect that, jump right into the word. I won't be before you long, um, but um, this is one of those celebration days for churchy folks, and I want to respect that too. So I want to give folks, um, give folks what they came for. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 25, um, there is a word from the Lord. It says, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? So if I said this, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, 50-inch screen, money green, leather sofa, Phone bill about two G's flat. And my whole crew is lounging. Okay, I see y'all. Thinking back on my one room shack while my mom puts push an act with minks on her back. If I said to all the ladies in the place with style and grace, what song is that from? Big Papa, Big Papa. So these are classic songs from a classic album, perhaps could be argued the best hip-hop album of all times. It, it, is, it is arguable. It is arguable. Um, particularly if you were to include the One More Chance remix as a part of that album, Album really could be arguably the best album, hip-hop album of all times. 
It's a classic jewel, this album, and it is called Ready to Die. Ready to Die is a sentiment that Jesus shared with his disciples that all of them, if they truly wanted to be his followers, needed to be ready to do. He wanted there to be no mix-up. He wanted there to be no confusion, no misadvertisement, no mistake about it that being a follower of his entailed something and that something was the potential for death. I believe that he did not just want his followers, his disciples to understand this, but I believe that it is recorded in the three synoptic gospels because this is a word for everybody who would be a follower of Jesus Christ that you need to be ready to die. That's really all that I showed up here in Bronzeville this Easter Sunday to tell you. It is that this weekend while we celebrate the sacrificial death of somebody else and the resurrection that happened for somebody else, as we celebrate the cross that somebody else was crucified on, I want us to not move past the fact that there is not only a cross for Christ, but if you're going to be one of his followers, there's a cross for you too. You got to be ready to die. Let me give you all some background. Jesus is here recorded in Luke chapter 9, and he has just told his disciples that there is some rugged terrain that is up ahead. He effectively says to them, I don't want y'all to get too comfortable with the gaining momentum of this movement and the popularity of this movement. I I know that people are checking for y'all now. I know that the people that used to make fun of y'all for leaving your jobs, your families, and your livelihoods to follow me, I know that now those people are second-guessing and they're trying to get like you. He says, I don't want you to make no mistake about it. There is momentum gaining, but before you get carried away, I want you to understand that the political winds are shifting that there is some shaking that is happening and there are some betrayals and some rejections and some conspiracies that are starting to rise against me. This will happen to the point that it will cost me my very life. But, But don't you be afraid because just as you have seen me exercise power and dominion over everything else on the earth, I also have power over death and the grave. And so even though they will take my life, come holler back at me in three days, and I will resume life again. In the same way that I will lose my life, I am calling you to be ready to give yours both figuratively and literally as a follower of mine. So what I want you to be able to do is to deny yourself, take up your cross every single day, and follow me. I wanted to spend a few minutes this Easter Sunday morning just breaking down this passage, these three parts, this denying of self, this taking up your cross daily and following him. The first thing he says, if you're going to be my follower, my disciple, deny yourself. Let me argue that this is both counterintuitive and also countercultural. It was then, but I want to argue that perhaps it is even more countercultural and counterintuitive now. Because what we struggle with in this age of reclaiming agency and reclaiming our voice and reclaiming boundaries is that we have this tricky responsibility of constructing boundaries for everybody and everything else except for God. And I know that some of us struggle with this in particular because of the abuses that have happened within sacred spaces. But but I want to challenge you not to throw away the godly notion of what it means to sacrifice, to deny oneself without limitations when it comes to God. It looks like Jesus in that Garden of Gethsemane when he struggled with the will of God and the sacrifices that he would have to make to be able to comport to the will of God. The the pain that he would have to endure to acquiesce to the will of God. But he says in the midst of all of this struggle, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. As Christians, we are always called to rearrange 
Because sometimes our will jumps ahead in line ahead of God's will. And when that becomes apparent, it is always for us to rearrange the positioning, to defer ourselves, to deny ourselves by placing God's will and God's desire and God's work ahead of ourselves. Now, I'm not here this morning calling any of y'all selfish. What I'm trying to point out is that following Jesus is hard. Jesus says that the natural human inclination to lean towards self-preservation is antithetical to the sensibilities required to be my follower. In other words, following Jesus pushes against self-preservation. In fact, he goes on a few verses later to tell them, whoever tries to save their life will lose it. But on the other hand, whoever is willing to lose their life for my sake will gain it. Let me see if I can help you see this. In in the late 1920s, uh, after a decade of economic prosperity and what we have come to know as the Roaring Twenties, the stock market crashed. That day would become known as Black Friday. In addition to that, banks around the country began to fail. Bank failure, you banking folks keep me honest here, Bank failure, as I understand it, is when the demand for withdrawals exceed the amount of money that the bank has on hand. This begins to happen. People lose as a result of this. People that didn't even have money invested in the stock market but just had boring bank accounts lost their life savings. As a result of the trauma that A whole lot of people experienced when this happened, it became common amongst a whole lot of people to never put their money in banks again, but instead put it in their own house under their mattress. Now, of course, keeping money under one's mattress comes with some hazards. Somebody could easily break into a person's house easier than breaking into a bank and steal all that money that's under your mattress. But there is a second downfall to this. Banks need the money that we deposit so that they can make loans to other people on the money that we deposited. So as a result of this, banks' ability to operate at optimal capacity was severely limited. And so under President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, they uh, came up with this idea that they would create what was called the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC. You see this sign next to the teller at your bank. It is FDIC insured. It means that the money that you make on deposit is insured and it is backed by the United States government nowadays up to, I believe, $200,000. This is meant get you to feel comfortable putting your money, depositing your money, taking it from the house under the mattress, putting it in the bank, believing that it is safe. This was meant to instill confidence in individuals, suggesting that rather than risking holding on to your own money, you're better off giving your money over to the bank, trusting your money to the bank because you are guaranteed not to lose it. They were essentially saying to the American people, those of you who are afraid and decide instead to hold on to your money, keep it for yourself, place it under your mattress where you can have easy access to it. By saving your money yourself in your own house, there is a possibility that you might lose it. I'm going somewhere. But if you will give it over to the bank, Even though it will no longer be in your physical possession, I need you to understand that you have entrusted it to safe hands. And rather than the possibility of losing it, you'll make some some gains on it. What I'm trying to suggest to you is that Jesus says to his followers and, and likewise saying to us this morning, to those of us who lack or have lost trust in God and perhaps even God's institution, the church, and you've decided that you would rather place your life in your own hands, keep it under your own control under your own authority, exercising agency over your own life, tucking your life under your idiosyncratic mattress. 
Let me say to you that more than being backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government, the deposit of your life that you are attempting to save is under safeguard and has the most security when you deposit it with God. And so rightly, Jesus says, whoever tries to save their life, tuck their life under their mattress, hold it for themselves, will lose it. But whoever is willing to deposit their life with me. Give up their lives for my sake. You will actually find life. He says, if you are my follower, you you must do what is counterintuitive. To do what goes against self-preservation and deny yourself. I'm sorry if you came on Easter hoping to hear about money and come up and prosperity and those things. The only thing we get in the day is the giving of our lives to God. Not not only does he say, if you're going to be my disciple, if you're going to be my follower, you got to be ready to die by denying yourself. But he says, secondly, Take up your cross. Y'all, crosses have uh, evolved into these symbols of piety. They are symbols of hope. We raise up big crosses on the side of the road. Some of us see it when we're traveling down 55, going south, down south on the highway. There's a big cross that you see when you're in, like, middle America. But when Jesus is talking to his disciples, his followers, his apprentices, Likewise, talking to us, what he has in mind is not this modern idea of crosses that symbolize faith and hope and love and all those things, but but it is cross that is not a symbol of piety. It is an instrument of torture. It is akin to a noose. Thank God for Dr. James Cone, the father of black theology, who made the connection between the cross and the lynching tree. Because that is the most appropriate connection in the first century of what it means to take up a cross. It it is not saying have the boldness to wear a gold cross on your neck to work. It is not saying have the boldness to put up a cross at your cubicle. It is taking up a symbol, embracing a symbol of execution. It is a noose. It is a guillotine. It is a stake that one is burned at. It is closer to the tool of terror that the Ku Klux Klan used in the burning cross than it is a gleaming cross on the back of a church. So when Jesus says, if you really want to be my follower, I need you to be aware of the cost, it means realizing that this is an exercise in figurative, daily death, and it may end in literal death. And for most of those men he was talking to, it did. Let me run the road for a minute. Luke was hung from an olive tree. Peter didn't feel that he was worthy to be crucified in the same way as Jesus decided to instead be crucified hanging upside down. Peter. John was one of the only ones that was not killed through execution, but they tried to throw him into a cauldron of boiling oil, but he didn't die. Mark was drugged through the streets of Alexandria. Somebody else had their limbs tied to two prancing horses until their body was torn apart. A lot of Christians in the first centuries under the persecution of the emperor Nero, they were burned at stakes to light the streets of Rome. They were thrown into the Colosseum for sport, for lions to chase them around, for crowds to be entertained until the lions killed them. That, that is what taking up a cross meant. He says, if you're going to be my follower, you got to be ready to die. Paul the Apostle helped us out, and he put it this way. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I no longer live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Paul effectively says that me and Jesus are in a weekend at Bernie's kind of situation, if you remember that movie. Paul effectively said, I've given up my life a long time ago. You see me, it's really Christ that is animating my body. Since I've given over myself, I am selflessly controlled by Christ. 
What he effectively is saying is that I serve Christ with my whole being. And that is where I'm trying to get us to this morning. That is the next step in Christian maturity. It is when it moves beyond checking the box of church attendance. It is when it moves beyond checking the box of serving in ministry. It is when it moves beyond checking the box of saying some prayers, but actually of giving over one's life to the control of Christ. Are you ready to die? This is Paul, so much so that by the end of his life, Paul could say, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Paul was essentially perplexed at the idea of death, and as Paul considered it, he said in his writings, if I continue to live, I'm simply living for Christ, but if I die, I get to go live with Christ. I don't actually know which one I prefer. What does it take to get so deep and so lost? In Christ, that that becomes our sentiment. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to take up your cross daily and follow him? What is God asking of you, but it feels like a cross? What is God seeking to get you to do, but it feels like a cross? Went to Home Depot and got a little little thing yesterday so I can help y'all understand this. So, what he actually meant when he talked about taking up a cross and follow me is taking up the cross beam. The Assyrians were the first to come up with this horrible instrument of torture. It was not just about the cruelty of dying, the easier and quicker ways to kill somebody, It's the shame on the way to death. Hence the the word, uh, the via della rosa, the road of sorrows that Jesus went down. They they, they could have just had him arrive at Golgotha, at Calvary, to be crucified. No, that's too easy. I need you to go down the public streets carrying this big, heavy, ridiculous, dumb crossbeam so all the people can see and know don't mess with Rome. And once you get there, we will nail your hands to this and we will affix the vertical beam, hoist you up, and let you hang there in the public until you die. And so when he says to the disciples, if you are going to be my follower, I need you to be ready to take up your cross. He is saying all of the imagery that comes along with taking up this instrument of shame, this ridiculous, heavy, dumb cross, I need you to be ready to do that, to be my follower What cross is Christ calling you to bear today? I know some of us came to church on Easter. Y'all look cute. Y'all look handsome. But I hope you don't mind bearing a cross. Some of y'all like me, you try not to crease your J's. So you're walking like this. And you carry your cross and sneaks. Can you carry your cross in Gucci loafers? Can, can you wear your red bottoms, but can you still carry your cross? He said, if anybody would come after me, they must deny themselves and take up their cross. Lastly, he says, follow me. Let me shut this thing down. Two things can be meant by follow me. First of all, follow me to the cross. Don't leave when the going gets tough. Ride with me all the way. I know none of y'all ever fought in high school. It's just me and probably Pastor Dre. 
I know you have fights. I, I know. Tell me I'm lying. <laughs> but when you got a fight, and, and you clear this is not going to be a one-on-one situation, I need to know that those who are with me are riding. Not just, I'm going to hold your book bag. There is a, I know this is all new information for some of you. I'm, I'm going to put you up on it so you don't have to Google it. There is a pre-fight conference that happens amongst friends to understand that if somebody jump in, you jumping in too. You have already decided the terms. Is this going to be a heads up or not? We just boxing. Some of the girls, are we hitting in the face? We, we need to be clear on that. Are we? A pre-fight conference. And, and so Jesus is effectively saying, I need to know that y'all are riding all the way to the end. The question that I raise to you this morning is, will you follow Jesus wherever he leads you? He says, if you are my apprentice, follow me. I've told y'all that this is leading down to the road of infamy. Will you follow me? Following Jesus ain't the end thing right now. Following Jesus is for uneducated people, Trump voters. Following Jesus is for people who don't believe in science. Following Jesus is not for academically astute people. But you brilliant, beautiful, intelligent, politically astute people have the nerve to be followers of Jesus. Following Jesus is hard. Following Jesus may also mean following his teachings. I talked to y'all a whole lot about what it means to follow the ethics of Jesus Christ. The ethics of loving other people, of sacrificing self, of generosity, of holiness, with the way we live our lives. Jesus is saying there, follow me in that way. Follow my teachings on forgiveness. Who do you need to forgive today? What family Easter gathering are we not going to because of unforgiveness? Follow my teaching on patience. Some of y'all going to Pearl's place to get a soul food plate, and they cooking over at the house the same food. But you ain't going to go eat with them because of unforgiveness. Follow my teaching on faith. F- follow my teaching on honesty. Follow me. It may mean the loss of some friends, but follow me. It may mean a different career than you expected, but follow me. It may mean no career at all, but follow me. It may mean sacrifice of your time, follow me. It may place you in a different country. Follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. I close with this. There is an old hymn that they used to sing. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? There is a cross for everyone and there is a cross for me. There's another song that comes to mind for me. It was some folks would rather have houses and land. Some folks choose silver and gold. These things they treasure and forget about their souls. But I've decided to make Jesus my choice. The road is rough. The going gets tough. And the hills are hard to climb. I started out, I was at a Baptist church right now, a long time ago. (laughs) And there is no doubt in my mind, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Jesus. The one that had beef with the religious establishment 
and static with the government. Jesus, the one who was whipped and tortured under trumped-up charges, but on a spiritual level, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus, the one who was nailed to the cross, crucified for a slow and public death. But he had told his disciples that I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people unto me. Jesus, the one who yelled out on that cross, it is finished while he hung there. The word is literally in the original language, tetelestai. It is a word often found on bills of sale in the first century. It literally means what Eric B. and Rakim would say 20 centuries later, paid in full. Jesus, the one who after making sufficient payment for our sins, gave up his life on the cross and was buried in what we have come to call a borrowed tomb. Jesus, the one who stayed there all night Friday night, all night Saturday night, I, I think I would lose my preaching ordination if on Easter I didn't add this part to my sermon, but early, early. Sunday morning, they, they came checking on the grave and somebody went on the inside first and came back and said, we got a little bit of a problem on our hands. We came to the grave to anoint his body, but, but the body that we came to anoint is not there. Nah, he wasn't there. But he had gotten up with all power in his hands. Jesus, are you ready to follow him? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for this challenge and this charge. This very serious question, are we ready to die? Are we ready to die to ourselves? Are we ready to be selfish, selfless to follow you wherever it leads us? Somebody here today, Lord, is going to step up like Jeremiah or like Isaiah when you said, who shall I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. I'll go. You're still in the sending business, God. Stir up in somebody that they may take the charge to go where you are sending them and to take up their cross. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. who used to scrap after school right on the weekend there's room for us right the thing that I love about Jesus is that he really is one that says come just as you are you don't even have to understand or figure out Everything that Pastor G just preached about. You don't have to have everything cleaned up. You don't have to have everything just right. Let me tell you, if you've lived life long enough, you know that there is no right time. But every time, all time is the right time to do the right thing. And so don't let the moment pass you by. This is not, we don't make a show of this here. The invitation that we extend to you is one that we extend on behalf of the one who got up. 
I've followed people and been in relationship with people that didn't keep their word. I follow, we follow human, frail people who prove to us time and time again they don't have the capacity to always follow through on what they said. That resurrection at that tomb on Sunday was evidence of a promise. And the thing that those women who went to that tomb would know is that what we know today that's a promise keeping God because he did exactly what he said he was going to do. And the people that walked with him along that journey who he invited all that time to take up their cross and follow him, imperfect people. So God's not asking for our perfection. He's just asking for us to say yes. We don't make a big show of it. I'm not going to ask you to come up here. All you need to do is admit that, yeah, I'm less than perfect. Believe in your heart that Christ died for your sins and that he loves you just as you are. And then confess that he's Lord. It's as simple as that. And if you are watching with us, you're streaming with us, you can text BELIEVER to 844. Girl, I can't see. Why I ain't get up here with my glasses? 877-9729. I keep playing like I'm not over 40. I'm like, text BELIEVER to 844-877-9729. If you need prayer, you can text PRAYER to that same number. If you're a visitor and you want to know more about City Point, text visitor to that same number. If you're interested in becoming a member, you can either text that number, or if you're in the house and you need prayer, you can see one of us who are standing or waving our hands in the back in our next steps area. If you know you're ready today, listen, the good thing about what Christ did when he left is that he left us one another. So even if you don't know what it means to follow and you don't know how to take the first step, this is the dopest church on the planet because we walking it out together. Amen? Amen. So see us in next steps. If you want prayer, if you want anything, we are here to talk with you today, okay? God bless you. Amen. Amen. All right. So our pastoral care pastor is likely going to start getting other interesting um, pastoral requests for people that need somebody to take rides with them to go see about somebody. Since they know you, since, since they know you, since it's been confirmed that you are a fighter, <laughs> she will she will also go ride down on somebody with you if if need be, and then she'll pray with you after, coach you, counsel you. All, all the things. Would you say? Oh, she says, watch, fight, and pray. She got a different Bible than I got. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. Praise the Lord. Hey, we had an amazing, um, really had an amazing time yesterday at our Easter Fest. That was only possible because you guys are consistently faithful in your giving, and generous when it comes to giving. Um, church doesn't run off good intentions. It just don't. Good intentions don't pay the light bills, don't pay the mortgage and insurance, and put on the incredible Easter Fest for the community that we put on yesterday. It just don't do it. I wish it did. It is because, you're, because of your faithfulness and giving and generosity, and I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, because we had an amazing march with regard to giving. So give yourselves just a, a round of applause. Thank you guys for doing that. Some of y'all got them tax refunds, and y'all was like kicking God down, like, take it. Um, and so I want to say appreciate that. Let's make today another good Sunday to close out the month of March. Uh, four ways to give. You can give uh, through Zelle. That is the, uh, one of the easiest ways. You can scan that QR code. Um, 
you can also give via text, text to give, 312. I think we have a bigger graphic, if you guys can bring that one up too, um, so everybody can see it. Um, you can text to give, text any dollar amount to 312, there we go, 313-1800. Um, the first time you do it, it's going to text you back a link so you can put in your debit card information or ACH information. Um, but then after that, anytime you text an amount to that phone number, um, it just knows to debit that amount. You can also give on our website, citypointcc.org slash give. And then lastly, if you need an envelope, um, this is going to be real interesting because the number of people, if you need an envelope, just wave your hand. Janine's got some over there. There's several people up front that need envelopes in the middle and on the left. And then if you do give via envelope, you can just stop at the next steps area uh, all the way in the back near that monitor, um, and you can turn in the envelope at the end of service there. Awesome. Awesome. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for all that you have given to us and the ability to, for us to be generous. I pray that you will use this exercise of faith, that you will honor it, that you will return to us 100-fold that which we give. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's um, leave this up just for a moment, just so everybody has access to the information. And then Carla's coming with announcements. Hey, hey. Good morning, City Point. Good morning. Happy, happy Resurrection Sunday, happy Easter, happy Sunday. We are so excited to have all of you here with us today. For our visitors, City Point, let's give them all a round of applause. We are so excited. So excited to have you all here today. We know there are so many different churches that you could have visited today, and we just feel blessed and honored that you would spend your Sunday with us today. And so I will not be in front of you long. I know that there is Easter Sunday dinner or a nap ahead of most of us. Yeah. So I'm going to just give you a couple of quick announcements and, um, and be out of your way. So the first one is about our women's collective. We have heard so many that are interested in connecting. Yes, we continue to build out our ministries and our abilities to connect with each other. And so this is yet the other one that we are looking at building out. So if you are interested in connecting with the other women in the ministry, this is your chance to, um, to sign up, to tell us what you're interested in doing so that we could create a ministry that meets everyone's needs. So feel free to hit that um, QR code to get more information, but there will be a connection on Saturday, April 6th at 10, 10 a.m. to really start to connect with our women. Our 21-day fast is starting tomorrow. So yes, for those that have not had a chance or have not heard, we are really focusing on building our faith this year, really doing a lot of our foundational um, principles, and one is fasting. And so we will be participating in the 21-day fast and prayer. This is the Daniel fast. This is the real, real fast. Like, this is where you get extra Christian uh, through this fast. <laughs> But no, like this is just a great moment to connect as a community, to connect with God, to really focus in on the things that are going to be meaningful for you in your, um, in your walk. So if you are interested, feel free to use that QR code if you need any information on how this fast works. And then our last one is just, we, we spoke about it at the beginning of the year, but it is coming up soon. Our amazing pastor will be inducted in the Martin Luther King Board of Preachers. <laughs> And that induction is coming up very soon. It is down at Atlanta at Morehouse College, and we are just so excited for him. There are a few of us that are head down to celebrate him when that happens. But again, we just want to say we love you, and we are so proud of you. So with that, that is our, our announcement. All right. Last call, too, if anybody, uh, anybody else wants to attend. Uh, where's Vonda? Uh, Vonda, come up real quick. Uh, if anybody uh, wants to attend, is not booked flights, needs to know what hotel we're at and all of that, um, you can see Vonda and she can get you hooked up. There's about, I want to say about a group of 10 or so that are going at this point. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good, good time. Good, good time. So yeah, Vonda, wave your hand. Everybody. See Vonda, she can, get you, uh, she can get you hooked up. If you miss any of the announcements or couldn't scan any of the QR codes, we do on our website um, have an announcements page, um, and you can get all the links <clears throat> related to those announcements on the website on the announcements page. All right, let's go home.
This time last year, we were at 2345 South Michigan Avenue. And I think I announced that day that we officially had our contract. It was on Easter Sunday um, on this building. And we were super happy and celebrating about that. And um, there were about 75 of us gathered uh, that day. And today there's 300. Um, that's, that's, that's four times. That's, that's four times. The Bible talks about just being faithful over a few things, and that's what we have been, um, been trying to do for these uh, 15 years is faithful over a few things, and, and God has provided increase, and the best is yet to come. Um, I, I've been praying all week for God to fill the room, and God did that. God did that, and if you are visiting with City Point for the first time, I hope that this won't be the last time that I get a chance to see you, that we worship together. Um, Our mission is to embody both Jesus and justice, to be a place that is welcoming for all people, to embrace theological diversity, uh, recognizing that we don't have to all share exactly the same commonalities and all of our beliefs but we ground ourselves in Jesus Christ, and that animates all the work that we do. Um, if you're looking to be a part of a church that is non-judgmental, where you can come as you are, um, if you are looking to be a part of a church that is truly the embodiment of community, um, where the people are going to be your siblings and going to be aunties and uncles to your children, um, this is that kind of place. And I stake my name and reputation on that. Um, And so I just want to say to you, welcome uh, to the dopest church on the planet. And hope that that we have an opportunity to grow together. Um, For those of you that haven't seen it, you need to stop down in the kitchen because God did a thing. Um, We're in a season of generosity uh, in our church. And um, I don't know if I have permission to share all the details of the who, um, but once I know that, I'll share the who. But you just need to know that some members of City Point donated um, an entire kitchen to our church so that we can serve. I, I said to them that we wanted, we needed a kitchen so that we could serve our community, um, Those with a lot of money and no money can have a place where they can come and eat um, and be human beings and be connected to other human beings. And they heard that and they tapped into their resources, their network, and their own pocket to do a thing. And um, I own a lot of investment property and I know that kitchens like that cost cost a little bit of change. Um, and they did it, and they did it right. So y'all need to go down there and take a look at it. And I hope that generosity pay, continues to just spur the generosity that is in our midst. God is truly doing something. Amen. And so I want to say, why, why don't you guys just give a roaring applause of celebration and thank you to them for that level of generosity. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for all that we experienced today. Thank you that the tomb is empty. Thank you that we serve a risen Savior. Thank you, God, for the beauty of fellowship, the ability to connect with one another in peace, to be instilled with hope and faith. Thank you for these children that are being formed through these experiences. Many of us started out that way. And my, how what you imparted in us by us being trained up as children in a way that we should go. My, how now that we are old, we have not departed from it. Thank you. I pray for our community. As the weather warms up, sometimes we have trouble getting along with each other. I pray in the name of Jesus that this will be a spring and a summer of peace in our city. I pray that this will be a spring where kids who got these bikes 
for Christmas are able to ride them up and down the block without them or their parents fearing for their safety. I pray that, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that children can walk to school and home from school and not have to worry. In the name of Jesus, give them that hedge of protection. I pray for those that are in Gaza right now. I pray in the name of Jesus, your hedge of protection around them. I pray that the genocide will cease. I pray that peace will reign there, but not a negative peace, but a positive peace. We pray these blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Be sure to say what's up to somebody before you leave. I love y'all. Peace. Money phones, really money loans, and that real life is you coming home. Empty house.